god of wind is a pilot, blustering in from the sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> You can't make this shit up. Raiders! DP shoot as he's got Cooper. There he goes! And When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization, and you tell them one thing, just win, baby. Yeah. Yeah. A little out of focus there. Guess it'll be one of those things we'll have to deal with at the initiation of the of the show. I am Captain Jack. And I'm not getting, I'm not gonna even do it. <laughs> I'm here. Yark! Raider Nation. I'm here in the Captain Jack. The Galleon Studios here in Valrico, Florida. Now, the other studio might be deep behind the enemy lines. And it's about, oh, I say about three, three to five miles over that way. Hello, Mandy. Good to see you. Or shall I say another name? Hmm, I won't go there. Bob, how you doing? I see we have Bob in the house. Hector, who else is here? George, hey, how you doing there? Lori, my my favorite Raider in all of San Jose. And I'm doing fine. This is Ask the Captain. And... What I wanted to do for Ask the Captain, how you doing, T Courts, as they say, Tommy? Good to see everybody here. Is yeah, Mandy gets it. That's why, yeah, I I love the hmm. Or shall we say hmm another name? Hey, make sure you say hello to uh to T Courts there, Mandy. And again, my favorite lady presently on hand pending other things obviously miss lori paloma of bay of graphics so lori i got some i got some uh i got a couple questions i might want to ask you as well hopefully you might be able to to hook me up and this is one of the shows that i wanted to be doing because again a lot of people 
when the commish was doing his um the uh, i want to say the greatest raider of all time and they said and i quote and i quote man that captain jack he likes all them old raiders he likes all them old raiders well there's a reason not that i'm partial to them is the fact that quote unquote the old raiders were what i was brought up with and the fact that it wasn't for the quote unquote old raiders I wouldn't be here right now. I think I've told everybody that will that'll reach out here that I'm from Philadelphia, and most every Philadelphia sports fan loves the Eagles. I don't love the Eagles. I love the Raiders because George Blanda's nephew was a schoolmate of mine. So if you can love another team, other hey Brad, T courts. That's for, I guess, for Maddie. If you can love another team, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to make sure that my boy will be coming on board. He said he would be, but one second. I did. I said I would actually uh, message him, so I'm going to do that now. So come, whoop. I, I lost my thought, but basically the reason why I love the old Raiders is because the Raider mystique, hey, Cheryl, Big E's in the house, were the, what I was brought up on. The Raiders of the Soul Patrol, the Raiders that were the quote-unquote criminal element. Cheryl, how you doing? The Raiders that I were brought up that were always kicking ass and taking names. These were my Raiders. And it's what I learned how to be a member of Raider Nation. Hey, Di. Thank you. Hey, all of us Raider Nation for life. If it wasn't for these old Raiders, we wouldn't have what we have today. And, you know, I'm not saying that this, that our, that our uh, fan base is more these millennials. And if you're a millennial and you take offense to that, I'm sorry. But the attention span for these younger generation fans that don't know about where they've come from, Is, is amazing. And making sure that the person knows to call me up in, we'll go from there. You guys know who it is, too. Alonzo Thomas Jr., better wise known as Skip Thomas's Dr. Death son, going to be calling in. in five minutes so he'll be calling in in five minutes and so when when uh zoe calls in we'll go to him but before we do that i want to say that i want to catch you up on the raider news if you don't know i'd like to uh make sure that everybody recognizes and says a solemn uh heartfelt regrets and or acknowledges the passing of the great Billy Cannon. Billy Cannon was a uh, Heisman Trophy winner, and he played for the Raiders, the old Raiders, the early 60s Raiders under Al Davis. And Al likes Al like to basically – he was accused of being a collector of the Heismans. Al Davis loved his winners. Al Davis loved USC 
for one thing, because of his ties to them. He, Yes, Wade, he was a great tight end, but actually he was a great running back. And it was actually Al's work with Billy Cannon that – was was like a, a prototypical what 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 was the makings of yeah I got Matt Matt's got it Tim Brown and Marcus Allen but it was Billy Cannon's running which made which made him have that transition over to tight end if you think that that sounds familiar you might want to remember that Al saw greatness in Billy Cannon at the running back position. And he said, you know what, with this guy's quicks, with his hands, with his size, he'll make a hell of a tight end. And he did. So it was under that thinking that he did it with another person. Al saw something of a gentleman by the name of Todd Christensen. When the Raiders were in the preseason against the Cowboys, because Todd was running back for the Dallas Cowboys, and Al saw something there. And, of course, obviously the scouting was there as well, but Al saw something there. So when Todd was cut by the Cowboys, immediately scooped up. How you doing there, Leslie? I'm sorry. I'm not ignoring you, darling. And congratulations on the uh, – the VGK going to the Stanley Cup Finals. And I'll get to that later on as well. If I don't, remind me. So, again, you can see what Al saw with Billy Cannon, star running back, converted to tight end. Todd Christensen, a very capable running back, converted to probably one of the best tight ends to ever play football. And why he's not in the Hall of Fame? Amongst the slew of Raiders that should be in the Hall of Fame, I don't know. But to Billy Cannon and his family, rest in peace from Raider Nation to you. So again, I was I was uh, talking about Al being a Heisman collector. He was accused of that, but basically he wanted people that were the, the best athletes in football. No, Kenny King wasn't a Heisman winner there, Georgie, but uh, we'll, we'll talk, good try on that. And I was going to say to you, how many, how many Heisman Trophy winners have played for the Raiders? How many? The captain knows. And that's one part of a question. How many Heisman Trophy winners played for the Raiders? And of that number, how many were drafted by the Raiders? There's the question. And I'm hoping to give out at a later time, we'll do some trivia prizes. I don't have any as of this time, but um, I tell you, what I can say, hey, Raider Reaction said to me, I'm not sure which one of you, you guys is there. But, uh, again, how many, how many? Don't just say them, Georgie. I appreciate it. How many? Give me a number. How many Heisman Trophy winners did the Raiders have playing for them? And how many of them, oh, Big L, and how many of them were actually drafted by the Raiders? I know that answer. So again, we'll go. We'll go to that. We're gonna have uh, Zoe calling in a little bit. You guys are caught up on that. I've already given out one question. Yes, okay. Mike Bo was drafted by the Bucks, but he never played for the Bucks. Okay, Bo was drafted by the Raiders, so he counts. Bo was drafted by the Buccaneers, number one overall. Never played for the Bucks, And do you know why he never played for the Bucks? I'll tell you why, in case you don't know. Bo Jackson was not allowed to play 
the latter part of his baseball season at Auburn because he took a ride on an airplane from Hugh Culverhouse of the Buccaneers, who was their owner at the time, to uh, come see him in Tampa. And because of that rules infraction, he was deemed ineligible to play baseball for Auburn. And he was so pissed off at the Bucks. I'm not wearing it all the time, Joey. I got it. I got a lot of other things to wear. But he was so get back to point. Bo was so pissed off at the Buccaneers that when they drafted him, and he said to the Bucks, "Do not draft me. I will not play." But with Bo, well, yes, he was exactly. He hated Hugh Culverhouse because he was had that year of eligibility of playing baseball, and he loved to play sports. So when Hugh Culverhouse and the Bucks drafted him number one overall about Bo, he didn't play for the Bucks, and he told him not to draft. Him. So again, and again, I don't say this egotistically. I just say this because I do know some things, and I like to impart that knowledge upon y'all so that we're all a better fan base because of it. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting uh, actually, Matt, you're off. Matt gave an answer of eight. That's not the correct answer. That's not the correct answer. And we got somebody calling in. Zoe, are you there, brother? Yes, sir. We're okay, I'm going to admit that you're kind of on the low side, so... Go ahead and talk talk into the microphone, brother. Hopefully we'll get everybody to hear you. Go ahead and talk there, Zoe. How's, how's this? Does it sound better? Yeah, I hopefully sound. Chris Lentz has it. The answer is 10. There were t- I'm sorry, Zoe. I'll, I'll, I'll get you caught up. I asked the, the audience. Yeah, no problem, no problem. I asked the audience how many Heisman Trophy winners played for the Raiders. And, and the answer is 10. Okay, now the second part of the answer is how many were drafted by the Raiders, folks. So, Chris Lance, get with me after this broadcast. At least I'm acknowledging that you got the uh, got the answer. And Mandy says hello to you, Zoe. Are, are, uh, Zoe, are you watching on Raider Reaction right now? Uh, can somebody send me like a um, you know a tag or something? I'm trying to find everything right now as we speak. Okay. And, uh, I'll be listening and watching at the same time. Okay. Um, I was gonna say. If, if you're on if you're on Facebook, there's so go to Kamish eighty one C O M M I S H eighty one, and that will get you into Raider reaction. Gotcha. There you go. That's even better than the link. I'm I'm what I'm walking you through, brother, because I love you. No, I love you too, brother. <laughs> I love the nation. You know how it is. And and you know and that's why I I wanted you on. I wanted to make uh, I wanted to make sure that you were definitely one of my uh first people I was speaking to and the one of the reasons why I had to uh, to have you here because though people were talking about how I am just a lover of the old Raiders that I don't give uh, I, Chris we'll get first off since I don't have any uh, prizes to give away as of right now I owe you a shot that much I can tell you Chris I owe you a shot until I get some prizes to give away, I owe you a shot. And Alonzo Thomas is joined, so good. We got you in here, Zoe. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, people always accuse me of being – thank you, Mandy, as well – of uh, of being an old, like an old, an old fart, that I, that I love the, the older Raiders intellectual <laughs> – oh, Chris Lowe. Oh, so you see, Chris, somebody – Hector Hernandez – wants to borrow your brain because apparently he, he thinks enough of you. But you are the son of the great Skip Thomas, Dr. Death of the Soul Patrol. And as a son of a great member of the of the Raiders, partner, it the, the floor is yours. I want I want you to go ahead and um and say what 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 being a a prodigal son of the one of those great members means to you, sir? Well, um, first off, I mean, it's 
just a, it's a, it's an honor, you know, to be acknowledged by the nation for one, you know, I mean, I am not my father, but I mean, I know I do great things out there and stuff like that. So I see why they, um, gravitate towards me. I'm a piece of him that is left here on the earth walking, you know, in the flesh. And we are a lot alike. Um, you know, it's, it's just an honor, you know, to, to be in that category with, with the players and their families and their great families and the things that they do out there as well. You know, it's, it's just an honor all, all the way around. Okay. And again, you know, I, I don't know the ins and outs and I know that you were, you were writing a book and I know that there was some that there was some things that were sidetracked on that. And again, uh, I, trust me, this is this is not a session where I say yay, nay, or otherwise. But uh, you sure. felt enough about your childhood in order to explore the boundaries of writing about it. And 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 why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Zoe? Well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to showing and telling the nation, you know, the insides of different things, like being the son of or you know, um, of a sports figure or entertainer or anything like that. It, it could be difficult at, at times. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing at the same time. Um, devil I sword type of thing, you know. I mean, um, for us as the kids, of, it's kind of difficult because, you know, we see our dads out there and, you know, we, we, um, we appreciate, you know, the people's reactions and things, but sometimes we're kind of selfish as the child of and just want our dads there or around. But then, you know, as you get older, you realize, you know, you know, these guys create their legends, you know, through other people and those people help create them. And my dad was one of those guys that fed off of the nation and fed off of the people and, you know, I'm glad to be doing the same that people doing, you know, the same thing reflecting off on me now. Now, what were, what were your recollections? I, I would like to say, I mean, I'm sure oh, that they to answer the question. I'm sorry, Cap. 2020, the book will be out. Okay. Okay. Well, well and, and we're all looking forward to it. I definitely want an autographed copy from you, sir. You don't even have to ask. You know, that's, that's a given. Well, thank Well, no, thank you, sir. I would, I would never, I would never uh, assume anything, so and I appreciate our friendship amongst amongst that. Because again, you guys can't see it on camera, but right over there is my Raider bookcase with a boatload of Raider books and all those other things. So I will definitely add it with with honor. Um, you know, I got uh, I got a couple autographed copies of like uh, I think Bad Mike Ciani's book was the last one I got autographed. So I want to make sure I get one from you, sir. Well, I'll definitely make sure that happens and anybody else sees me out there doing things, they can always come up to me and ask me for one as well. Well, thank you, sir. Well, obviously, make sure you buy the book. I got to make sure we support our man here. Yeah, definitely. I want to have a, a lot of us will be involved with the book, just like, you know, how I involved you and a lot of the other super fans and booster clubs and, and so on and so forth. You know, it, I want to make sure that the, not the Raider, just the Raider Nation sees us, but the actual nation sees what we're about and what we do, you know, on and off season. And um, I just so happen to be able to, you know, be that voice for the people. So um, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen in the future. Outstanding. Well, now, other than writing and uh, other than you're having your, 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 your hometown, or, or I should say, uh, being in Vegas, obviously, you got the catbird seat of the, uh, basically your childhood dream through your familial ties coming right to you in a couple of years. So especially with that 2020 launch, that definitely coincides well with the uh, with the Raiders coming to town. So that just I mean, that that just works out so well for you, sir. Yeah, um, you know what, and I'm glad it did work out that way. I mean, I'm sure there's people that are listening now and people have been following me for a couple of years now. I've been talking about this book, but I just had to make sure it was done, you know, the right way. So I pushed it back a little bit and I'm glad I did because now we'll be getting a different, uh, it'll, it'll actually be a story and not just uh, statistics and football book and um, I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, sharing my story. And there's there's a story out there that, you know, a, a kid or even 
someone an adult like me out there that went through what I went through or, or going through it right now, or their parents or their mom, you know, is supporting that athlete out there, whoever, whoever I can touch with the book is the purpose. Now, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much for it, but, and obviously, as you alluded to, being the, being the son of a player that's well known, obviously has some drawbacks. So I'm not, I'm not going to delve upon the negatives because again, that that's probably going to be a very uh, enticing portion of your book. And I'm sure everybody wants to read that as well, but you know, Cap, um, even those negatives turn into positives. So at the end of the day, the smoke clears everybody to have a great respect for my father and what he, what he did and respect for him as a man. And so it will, it will all be a positive. So I look at it like that. Well, that, that, that's great. And I, I appreciate that as well. So of the, of yes, the, sir. of the positives that I, I mean, other than the negatives turning to positives, can you give me like maybe something that quickly comes to mind is probably one of the, 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 the nicer moments of your childhood with respect to your dad and the team. Uh, just going out with my dad on regular days, like it could be a regular Wednesday and he'll call up um, Fred Blitnikoff or Ted Hendricks or some of these guys that we just like, you know, idolize and we're just like, wow, you know, wow, bye or whatever they do. You know, I uh, got to actually spend time with them, like quality time and their kids and those were the best moments for me, like actually going places with my dad, training camp and walking around with him. And, you know, those are the, the best memories I have. Okay. Well, and like those guys, you know, those guys were players and stuff like that, but those guys were like my uncles to me. Exactly. And uh, I was going to say, obviously, uh, where you, with your dad's position in, in, in Soul Patrol, um, you know, you – Hanging out, and did, what uh, did you get a chance to hang out with, like, say, Willie, George, and Jack, at, or, or at least see them more on a regular basis because of, because of your dad as well? I, I would imagine. No, most definitely. I mean, I I don't know if I would have met them. You know, I would have always been a Raider fan growing up in Oakland, but I don't know if I would have had those moments behind closed doors with them where they sat me down about college or playing ball or whatever I was doing, you know, at the time, but I've met all of them. Uh, I still talk to Cliff every, every other week. Um, I seen Willie, uh, at David Hum's, um, tribute, uh, gave him one of the soul patrol patches. He looked at me and man, it, you know, it just, it's a crazy feeling, man, to pass him that patch and how he felt about it and how he looked at me and, we talked about my dad for a second. Those are the moments that I appreciate the most when, you know, I just get that one-on-one -on -one time. We just, you know, just pass stories back and forth. Great. And I, and I will, I will say this. You don't even have to, you don't even have to get the word out because I'm doing this. I'm going to let everybody know that if you are in the market for, uh, for some uh, Skip Thomas wine, if you're in the market for Soul Patrol patches, if you're in the market for various things, Raider memorabilia through any sort, please be sure to get a hold of Alonzo uh, on Facebook. I appreciate that. You know, we're going to be putting – the SBA is going to be putting out a lot of stuff this year, you know, and I appreciate all the support we get because, you know, when I do put stuff out, it, it, it flies off the shelf, and that means a lot to me, you know, as far as the respect, the mutual respect I have for the nation, you know. So, I mean, I got new vinyls that just came out for your cars, your trucks, or whatever you want to stick them on, and uh, jerseys and all kind of stuff, whatever you need, you know what I mean? You guys can contact me anytime. Just look on my timeline. You'll see a lot of stuff, um, merchandise, and um, we're pushing it. SBA Inc. Is, is, is really getting big. My design group. Um, shout out to uh, Loyalty Crew, you know, for everything they do for me, and I appreciate you having me on, Cap. You know, it means a lot. You know, it means I'm I'm pushing hard and, and people are taking notice and, and and that means a lot to me. I mean, I made the SBA up from scratch, you know. And, and that is the Silver and Black Alliance, in case anybody was wondering. And, uh, Zoe, I, I hope you can see, I'm going to bend down here, if you can see right above my hat, 
what is right above my hat, right behind me. You, I hope you can see it. Let me see that. My camera. Oh wow! Yes, I do, sir. There you go. That then again, that's that means a lot for me. And, and folks, in case you can't see it, I'm going to try to point to it. There, whoop! There it is. Right there is a bottle of of the of the wine that I got personally. That's uh, it's showing in that picture that I did on the promo. Uh, any anything that's really it's definitely heartfelt. You know, I make sure that I keep up with my personal collection. And uh, the one gentleman says, hey, you got a lot behind you. Just wait until it's up on the wall because, you know, I, I spend money to get the way that this will be looked upon when I get my room done the way I want it to and not just a uh, a collection of a bunch of uh, stuff. I don't want to say craps. It's not crap, but a bunch of stuff that's in my room once it gets put on the walls of my new edition. And obviously, Zoe, you, you are definitely welcome out here, sir, as – as my, my personal friend, I definitely appreciate that. Man, I definitely appreciate it as well, man. And you're uh, one of the the uh, thousands of people that have reached out to me if I'm ever in their city, you know, to stop by or talk, you know, sit down, have a beer, talk about the Raiders. You know, those things mean a lot to me, man. The, the friendships that I've gained uh, through the nation and some through my father or different things like that are, are, are truly a blessing, man. I've met some great friends and um, that have been here for me and I've been there for them. And uh, it goes past just the Raider thing, but friendships are a great thing that I've gained, gained through this. And I really appreciate you for one, Cap. I mean, we've been friends from day one, you know. So you were the, one of the first people I called when I made up the SBA and wanted you to be a, a part of it because I knew it was going to grow. It has, and 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 I one thing I'm going to try to actually I am going to ask if you have an SBA patch as I put out in all my broadcasts, I want to make sure that that goes on my Saturday vest because I want to, I, I tell people if you have an organization that is Raider centric, I want to represent it, and I want to make sure that the SBA patch is there for me. I'll make sure you get that too. Uh, we got a lot of do, new products coming out. I got some SBA patches and vinyl and, oh man, um, I want you guys to, you know, pay close attention to my timeline. I also have in Las Vegas, I have a semi-pro football team that is named after um, the SBA. So I have a semi-pro team here in Las Vegas. It's called the Silver and Black Alliance. We play uh, here in LA, Arizona, all kind of places, and uh, if you see it out there, just please support it. You know, these guys are out here um, in semi-pro league trying to make it to different places, Canada and uh, the league eventually, and um, it gets them off the street. It gets them um, something to do and something constructive, and, and they – I watch these young men grow into men, you know, being on the gridiron and uh, off, and I really appreciate it, you know, it, we, you get out there and support I most definitely won. I will be out there for, uh, uh, or at least the plans are for being out there for Raider fan convention. So I'll definitely come see you there. If there's anything you want from an old salt to come out and give you a rousing uh, captain's yard in front of your team, just because I love you, you make sure you let me know as well. Man, I've seen you in Arizona shaking your tail feather, man. I see you still got it. So <laughs> I, might, I might take you up on that offer, you know, halftime show or something. Hey, as long as my meds are working. And unfortunately, I didn't get the, I didn't get the shot in my back this week because I actually I forgot to get off my meds for a week in order for them to do it. But if my meds are working and that the shots are there, I will, I will shake as many as I can for you, So Sounds good, brother. Okay, partner. Is there anything else while you got the floor? Um, there's a billion things on my mind, but I'll, I'll try to put it in a nutshell. I want uh, you know, everybody to start practicing what they preach about this one nation thing. I see a lot of BS, you know, on Facebook and the whole city to city thing and the move and this and that. You know, I really get sick of hearing it. You know, if you're a Raider fan, you're a Raider fan. You know, um, the Raiders come before the city. You know what I'm saying? And oh, everybody wants to pick a city to represent. And without Oakland, 
really there is no Raiders. Without LA, there's no Raiders. And now we're gonna have to look at Vegas the same way. So either you either with this or you just not. You know what I mean? I'm just tired of seeing the the separation when, when unity is what we're supposed to be having. Warner, you, you couldn't have said it any better, as I've said it before, and, and I'm sure you will chime in. I'm a Raiders fan. I've been a Raiders fan from Jump Street in 1972, living in Philadelphia. I didn't care if it said Oakland in front of it or L.A. in front of it or back to Oakland in front of it. I understand. I understand that the roots of the blue-collar Raiders are in Oakland. But you know what? You follow the team, you follow the shield, you follow the pirate. Exactly. You follow where the autumn wind takes you, you know? And uh, the whole thing is just about unity. And, and like I said, just practice what you preach, man, and, and take it upon yourself to do so, man. And represent the Raiders, you know, silver and black. That's what we need to do. That's right. Hey, we got a great season ahead of us. I don't know what the gripe is about. You know, I really don't. This is the season where we should all come together because we got a lot of good pieces. You know, getting Gruden back was bigger than some of these. Uh, I don't know. Can I curse? Half-ass. There you um, go. Later fans well, have been acting. I was going to say. Do yeah, I was going to say the rate of reaction is a. Uh, is a, a, what do you call it, a, a strong language available. I'm going to have, and I'm going to have you on again when I do my podcast. It's going to be for, shall we say, kid-friendly, so don't don't worry. You can swear on this yeah. one, but uh, when we do the podcast, we'll make sure we keep it within the FCC. <laughs> well, I try to keep it, you know, I try to keep it respectful out there anyway. You know, I represent the SBA uh, and, and my father, so I try not, even though my father was a world-class cusser, you know what I mean? Everybody knows that, but I try to keep it, you know, um, to where we can we can share this this um, this interview, and whoever gets something good out of it, you know, then then I serve my purpose for tonight, you know. There you go. There and, you go. And, uh, that, I'm, I practice what I preach. I don't know about everybody else. I see a lot of BS out there, and it it's, it saddens me that um, you know human nature takes over Raider Nation. And I, I patent that already, so don't even think about using it. Whoever out there, fuck y'all. What was that? Human nature takes over Raider Nation? You didn't fucked up and let me know I could curse now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. No here, worries, yeah. man. Hey, I tell you, I tried to do it where, where and people on this show know it, but when I was on Wednesday, there there is nobody – then get me into a swearing contest easier than Big L. And he loves it because he, he likes pushing those buttons and he knows that I just go off when it when it's when it, but you know what? I still love him. And as I love you, you know what? The F's can fly, but you know what? It, it means it because you're 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 being as real as you can. That's for true. And that's it, man. And they can hate me because they hate me if they want to. I'm still going to keep it SBA affiliated. It's always going to be silver and black. And I'm going to make it an alliance, you know. Uh, whoever with me, they with me. If they not, they not, man. You know, that's just how it is. Uh, I can't make everybody happy and put a smile on everybody's face, but I'm damn sure going to try. Well, uh, we, we well. definitely. We've definitely enjoyed having you on here, Zoe. I, I said I, I appreciate you spending time with us. I didn't know how much time you wanted to spend. That's why I said it was open ended. I'm truly honored. It, I'm but, truly honored, Cap. You're a good dude, and you are absolutely a professional, and you're a Hall of Famer. And I have major respect for you, so I agreed to do this for you. You know what I mean? And and put the message out there to the nation. You know. Well, I, I, Zoe, I appreciate it, sir. It, it means a lot coming from you. Ditto, my friend. Just keep uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. And I'm glad you're actually getting out there and you got a show now and you have a lot to say and you got history to, uh, you know, put in any of these kids that are coming up now, these new Raider, this new Raider generation. That's what I'm trying to do, too. That's why I keep my father's, you know, memory alive and the guys that played along with him and before him. And after the fact, you know, so, um, you know what, man, I, I have never, I'll give you one fact about Alonzo Thomas that y'all don't know, man, but 
that Marcus Allen run, bro, changed my life. Not my father being a Raider. You know what I mean? I was a Raider because of the Raiders. Uh-huh. And watching that Super Bowl and when Marcus Allen cut cut back on the field, it was a wrap for me. That's right. If, I, if it was like 38 Bob Treo, or, or it was a certain number Bob Treo, I remember it well. Right, 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 man. And that, that game is the first game that I can remember as a youngster saying, it's, a, it's it for me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a Raider for life. And so, like we talked about it earlier, we touched on that subject. Doesn't matter where the Raiders go or end up or whatever. Uh, what the Oakland Council didn't do enough of, or the Raiders, the Raiders wanted to do this or that and wanted to be in Vegas. Whatever it is, it is. And we go with it and we represent, man. No that's, matter if they're on Jupiter, right? That's right. That's right. That's why mm-hmm. I, I, it, now, I, I say this with the, the best. As of right now, as long as this captain's heart still ticks, I will do everything in my power to make sure that I have at least one season ticket out in Vegas so that people will see me in my uniform, as I call it, because it's not a costume. A costume is for folks who are in Halloween. My uniform as a Raider fan is my garb as Captain Jack, and I will be in my uniform as long as my ticker is is running in in uh, Las Vegas, I'm going to be there this year in Oakland. I hope to see you out there as well. 2019, we're not sure where, but I will be out there with you anytime I can be out there with you there, Zo. Well, you know, I'll be out there um, every year for sure, you know, for a couple of games. But you can definitely count on the Skip Thomas tribute tailgate party. That's every year, you know, for the Kansas City game. And, you know, the day before will be the meet and greet, the SBA meet and greet. So, if y'all can mark that on your calendar, that's another thing I, I do every year is the SBA meet and greet the night before the Kansas City game. Right, and, and that's then the Kansas City game. We have the Skip Thomas tribute. Right, so and that's the going. that's the early December game. And if all goes as planned, I'll be out there for you, brother. That'll be awesome, man. I'd love to throw you on that flyer and let the people know that you're going to be there, and uh, you know they want to see you too, man. Ah, uh, uh, nah, they 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 don't want to see an old man. They that 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 they they, they want to see all of Raider Nation there, and, and if an old man gets on your flyer, trust me, it's not. I wouldn't say I, I would be honored to be that with it because I I am, but you know I don't want to scare people off as well. Man, you're a Hall of Famer, man. There, you got a lot of respect out there, and people need to recognize you know what you super fans really bring to the table. I don't think I even understood before I started doing the research and started doing this book, what you guys really bring to the table is, is, is the spirit of the Raiders. And whenever you guys show up to my events or anybody else's events, I'm just as happy as a kid, you know, to see you guys. And so that's what I meant. The people will love to see you and see whoever else shows up to this thing, you know, not in a costume, in uniform. That's because right. I really do feel like you guys are doing the same thing, man. The way the players strap up, you guys strap up too. That, that, and and, and yet yeah, that is true, man, and I'm glad you said it. Yeah, man, it's a lot of preparation and things like that, man. I don't think people sit back and think of – and you know what? Um, it's it's – it's, it's it puts a hole in your pocket as well, you know. It's it's a lot of dedication in a lot of different ways. And when I started traveling, like um, a couple of years ago from here to New York, just going to games, and I would see different super fans there, or in Kansas City, or you know, in Jersey and shit like that. Man, I'm just I, I'm blown away. Like you know, um, uh, you know, an RIP man. I mean, you know, to get on that subject. I flew out to New York, you know, last time we played the Jets. And, man, I'm walking down Times Square and, and Oaktown Pirate screams out Zoe in, from out in the car. You know what I mean? I'm just like, wow, this dude was way out here. You know what I mean? You just never know, man. And it, it takes a lot, man, to do what you guys do. And, you know, I, I understand now why you guys can't even take three steps without taking a picture. Yeah. You guys are the spirit. Yeah. Uh, uh- but you know what? I, 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 I can speak for me and I can speak for most of us. 
there's nothing that that lights up our day than taking pictures with with folks and that's with obviously with raider nation but you know what with the kids and i also enjoy taking photos with the with quote unquote the enemy because they say hey look at that pirate over there let's get a picture with him because that's fun too that's the thing to do though you know i mean you're spreading the word that the nation isn't about just gangsters and this, that, and the other, all the negatives that they want to bring up about the nation. And that's another reason, like I said, I want to help and make uh, the nation by, you know, supporting these booster clubs and super fans and putting them in this book to let the nation know, like, we weigh more than that, just that all these barbecues and events and all season stuff we do just to bring the nation together and, you know, see each other and throw these big events, you know, that. I, don't, I, I just don't see other other organizations doing that. I, I don't see it in any other sport. So I really want to push that part of it. Like that's that's part of our culture, you know. As Raiders, you know those tailgate parties and us going out to the Hilton and us meeting up places and seeing these alumni players and the reactions they get from you know us just you know, seeing them and things like that is, is, it's a really great feeling, man, to be a part of the nation. Yeah. And that's why we need to embrace it now. We're about to be a good team, you know, with a great coach and, you know, people want to, players want to come to this team. You know, we're on the up and up, man. I, I, I see, I don't know, everybody's got a different opinion, but I don't know what you think, Cap. I, I think 10 and 6 myself. That's just me. Well, I, I actually I I've gone up. I think that that's when when the commission and I did our when when the schedule was announced. Uh, I think that's what I had us down at as as ten and six. Now before the schedule came out, as far as like the uh, the order and all that other stuff, I said this is going to be a gel year because I reminded people that under Gruden's first two years. Eight and eight, eight and eight, and that set us up for twelve and four and eleven and five. It still is going to be a bit of getting this team together to see how fast that they can gel. Gruden is definitely a, a, a coach that likes his veterans, and, and yeah, I hope that I hope he's going to be able to to do a little bit more education on the younger guys because unfortunately, and I don't say this in a bad way, but he hasn't done that in the past. So I'm hoping that. He he gets a little bit better than that. It could be you know seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven, any anywhere in there. But then when I, the schedule came out, I had us at ten and six. But hopefully those are those are the glasses that will prevail. I like the pieces that we've added, you know, over the free agency and you know the draft. It was really good for me. I don't know everybody's got their own opinion about the draft, but I think we went after players that we need and players that can make an immediate impact far as like starting you know Aiden Key is one of them he's going to be on the other side that dude's badass you know oh, yeah. I mean, we got some First, we got some real monsters and everybody wants to talk about how old Derek Johnson is and blah 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 well Navarro hasn't showed much interest and he wants more money and we actually got a savvy veteran in the middle that can teach the next guy that's going to step up so I'm, I'm happy with the moves we've made, you know, especially the DT position got addressed in the draft. and Not just I, once, I, I, but I, twice it, with, with Hall and Hurst. Right, and then you got to look at the corner position. We went out, we didn't go get a, a Richard Sherman. We didn't spend billions of dollars on one guy. We went and got a bunch of savvy veterans that were starting on other teams to add depth. You know, and I, I feel that that was super important, you know, especially with young comedy and um, these younger guys we have, these these savvy veterans at corner can teach these guys, and we're going to be fine. Right. And I was going to say, we got Nick Nelson in the fourth round. It's going to be a, a good up-and-comer. Obviously, Conley's going to be on that one side, providing hopefully that everything's good with that. The kid that we got from the Colts is probably going to be on the other side. And then we picked up, uh, the, the, was it Wor Worley? Wor I think it was Worley. Yep. Great, great Worley. ability. And Sharice Wright as a as a right. extra player. We, we got people there that are going to help us out. Leon Hall. Yeah, there you go, Leon Hall, which is why we don't need Pac-Man. We got Leon Hall, who has the ability and is not as old as Pac-Man. He doesn't have the bad attitude either. 
Right, right. I don't think Gruden will pick him up. I think that um, there's just too much bad blood here with the Raiders for or for us to even look at Pac Man. I mean, would I would I like to have him? I, I, yeah, I'd like to have him if he's willing to take less money. You know what I mean? But I don't see that happening. You know, it, it would be a good addition. You know, but who knows what will happen in the locker room with him and. He's had the history with Amari, so I mean, right. I'm happy with what we have, and I'm looking to see, like, I'm I'm looking forward to see when when cuts start, and we actually pick up a couple of free agents from that too. I mean, we got to think about that. We're we're still not done yet. Oh no! Oh no! So, we we you know, pick... when these blocks start getting cut down, we're right. gonna find we... we're gonna find them gems out there, and you know, teams that say, hey you know what, we don't need to pay this guy. We got this other guy. And some veterans will be out there, and I hope we make the right decisions. And I think we will. I think we will. And, again, Zo, loved having you on. One, fi- one final thought from your partner. I'm going to take, take some comments, and I'm going to give some comments to everybody out there in Raiderland as well. My only thought is Raiders. Raiders. Hey, uh, when you- when you go when you go back and you watch this, I want you to check out the uh, check out the introduction. You will definitely hear that coming from the the pipes in my intro, partner. Oh yeah, definitely, man. And don't be afraid to use my song too. A lot of people out there haven't really heard it, but if you ask me to send it to you, or there's a way you can go to it and listen to the Doctor Death song too, man. I, I yeah, love it. I just I, I got a lot of stuff going on, man. Right. I do love it. I wanna I wanna put it in there, but there's no way that I've been able to find a, a, a source where I can download it that I can use it. So if you can uh, uh give me a, a, some fine tunes on that, I will definitely yeah, use it. Put it this way, I'll make it happen, Captain. Oh okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll be fine. All right. I got well, you. Hey. From the words Thanks for having me on. You know. the, hey, lots of love to you, Zoe, and thanks again for coming on, partner. Thank you, brother. And I'll go on and uh, check out the comments and, you know, uh, reply to to some of them and get to, you know, some of them that I can. And thank you all for tuning in. Thanks again for having me, Cap. Support them right as That's you know. right. That's right. Hey, and if you got any questions for Alonzo, put them in the comments or, or go uh, v, uh, P4 right to the man himself. He will answer you. There you go. All right. Hey, Zoe, thanks again. We'll, we'll see you out there for RFC as well as hopefully your event, partner. Anytime, Cap. I'll talk to you all later. All right. Have Bye. All right. Bye, Zoe. Thanks again, partner. And that was Alonzo Thomas. I was the one gentleman that said, who's your dad? If you didn't know. That was Skip Thomas's Dr. Death's kid. So there's your answer right there. And so I, I will leave you with this. I will leave, leave you with a couple things. I want to catch you guys up again on what's going on. Again, I have an affinity for the Raiders of old because if it wasn't for, quote, unquote, the Raiders of old, I wouldn't be here right now. If you're a kid in Philadelphia and you don't like the Eagles, there's got to be some reason why. And the reason why was watching the Raiders on NBC every Sunday because they were always the 4 o'clock game on NBC. They were always the 4 o'clock game because they were the predominant team to beat in the AFC year in, year out, untold. They were always in the AFC championship game. Go look at that. I want to say at least six years in a row, they were in the AFC championship game in the early 70s. That's the Raiders of old. And it always used to piss me off when the Steelers would beat us. It pissed me off. But then we finally beat the Steelers. And then we went to the Super Bowl and we kicked ass. And with Zoe's father, with Jack Tatum, with George Atkinson, and, of course, old man Willie taking that interception back. We beat the crap out of the Minnesota Vikings. And then the next year when we were in the AFC Championship game against the hated Denver Donkeys, we should have been to the Super Bowl again if it wasn't for a bad call that the officials didn't get right when Rob Lytle fumbled the friggin' ball and the officials didn't call it right. And this was before... 
This was before instant replay. But again, the Raiders of old is where this team is at as far as the love. These people, the players, the, the fans give their all for the team they always have from Jump Street. And that's the way it is. Dr. Death, thank you. We know you. We love you, Zoe. And thank you for coming out. The people didn't know why I have an affinity for, quote, the old guys. Because the old guys are where it's at. The younger generation needs to learn who these Raiders of old are. They are so much more, in my opinion, than a lot, not all, but a lot of the younger generation of Raiders. I'm sorry. I'm not an old man. I'm not an old codger. I didn't walk to school uphill both ways in the so in the snowstorm and then in, in the in the heat of a desert each morning and night. It's the way it is. I'm not just an old man that is messed up in the head. I have a lot of love and knowledge, and because of the love and knowledge is why Zoe was my very first guest on Ask the Captain. On some days, we're not going to have a, a, a guest that's going to be able to speak his mind for the entire time, and I love Zoe for doing that. We wouldn't have the show that we had if it wasn't for people like him. And bless you, and bless your father, and bless those that we have lost. As I said from the be said from the beginning, you know, we lost Billy Cannon today, and I did some research as well. I had another trivia question, which I will end the show with. Y'all know about. The Soul Patrol. Y'all know about the Soul Patrol. But I want you to name who the who the nickelback was. And I will take three answers. Who were the nickelbacks of the Raiders defensive backfield when the Soul Patrol was going on? I got the answers right here. I got the answers right here, too. But to make sure I was correct, I did research. I knew it, but I wanted to be sure. I'm going to take three answers. And of that three, the reason why this brings it up is, again, one of them is no longer with us. Rest in peace to this gentleman as well. So as we leave the first edition of Ask the Captain, Uh, Zo, thank you, man. Love you. Love you as well. Looking forward to seeing you, sir. Definitely look forward to seeing you. And, yes, I will buy another Soul Patrol patch from me because I want to make sure it goes on some of my other gear. Some of my other gear. Got to have it. So get me, get me a patch ready for that, and that's going to be bought to make sure it goes into your coffers. But I definitely would love that SBA. That's going right on my Saturday vest. Hector, yes, the assassin was there. But I said Jack Tatum. I said Willie Brown. I said George Atkinson. I said Skip Thomas as Dr. Death. That's the Soul Patrol. If you guys look behind me, there's another four defensive backs up there as well. Now it's the no passing zone. Those were the Raiders defensive backs of the 80s. So, again, Lots of love. I love my D-backs. I was, a, I was a grunt, man. I'm a lineman. I'm a big ugly, as they used to say. Keith Jackson, the big uglies. I'm a big ugly. I'm an offensive lineman. I played defensive lineman. I played, you know, outside linebacker when I was able to rush because I got kind of too slow to play it in the latter parts of high school, but I still loved it. But again, ask the captain. Going to be doing this hopefully every Sunday that I can. Thank you as well, I, I, everybody. Thank you. No, Michael Haynes was not a, a nickelback for the Soul Patrol, Mike. 
if that was what you were pointing out. Three answers. Three answers. And if you guys can want to wait to the next show and chime in, remember, I'm taking three answers. Yeah, okay. I will say Lester at the latter portion, Chris. You are correct. But Lester was more of a rookie back then. And he really didn't get to be the, the, the nickel back. He was more of a special teamer. So Lester would be the fourth answer. But I'm talking I'm talking three. Lester was Lester was answer four. So guys gotta dig. Guys gotta know. Guys gotta know your stuff. You can say, where'd you get that answer? Well, it's because it's up here. So again, Raider Nation, this is the captain. Yark! Have a fantastic week. Join Raider Reaction this week for all of our shows. Goes to the post Monday nights with the commish. Tuesday show. Wednesday shows the Raider Nation Invasion. And I will be back with the commish on Thursday for Raider Nation Ricochet. See you then. Have a great week. Love to all of the Raider Nation, silver and black. Except those trolls. Got to watch those trolls. I'm out. Have a good one.